I've got to be honest here, I'm finding it a little bit hard to talk about Overlord. Simply because not much really happened in Overlord. It was a great big world building episode and I kind of admire that because most anime they try to throw something out that feels like it's in the middle of the action when really it's a prequel kind of thing. With Overlord they were just like, nah, let's just start this right from the beginning. And it was a good kind of feeling, like we're really set in the world now, like I know exactly what's going on. They haven't dropped us into the middle for half the episode to show off how cool it's going to be and then had a, like a flashback kind of thing to show how the situation formed. Instead, the whole beginning of the episode was exactly in proper time what was going on, what was happening. I like that and I respect that and it's pretty cool. And this anime has a really dark and serious tone to it. Kind of. It's also got a lot of etchy. <laughs> I'm assuming it's going to anywhere. Like our main guy has already just like groped a chick for about a good two minutes. <laughs> and he seemed to be having a lot of fun with that. The girl seemed to enjoy it a shit ton and she was ready for more. It was kind of fun. They really are confident that you're going to fall in love with that chick. Like, the whole ending video is just her in various positions looking very enticing. And I've got to admit, I've kind of fallen in love with her. She's a very well-designed character, and she looks like she'd fit right into the anime I'm going to watch in a minute called Monsume. So, gotta love that. The storyline is interesting. Like, it's the same kind of thing as Sword Art Online, where just all of a sudden you couldn't log out of the game, and the game's become real, and... NPCs all have souls and they're talking to you and shit like that's going on. But as far as we know, the only guy who's stuck in the game is this one dude. Momonga, which is a silly name. <laughs> I don't know his real name, but everybody's calling him Momonga because that was his character's name. And he is a beast. Like, no joke. He's max level. He looks like the Grim Reaper. He has a weapon that's apparently like beyond anything else in the game. It's really cool. And I'm not sure, as I said, if anybody else is trapped in the world from the human world. It could be that this is just all a delusion of him, or I don't know, that he is just literally the only person that's been trapped in this gaming world. Either way, it's really cool. <laughs> like I said, the way they've done it is really impressive. All the NPCs have come to life and they haven't like instantly said oh my god i must get back to the real world he's just like do i really want to go back to the real world i mean really didn't have much fun there the leveling up bonuses weren't too great just got a birthday cake really who gives a damn about the real world the graphics ain't even that good the level cap is just crap it's all pay to win i'm sorry i'm going off topic anyway <laughs> So yeah, it's a lot of fun. The characters are quite interesting. Very stereotyped though. Like you've got the twins, one of them being very gung-ho, one of them being very embarrassed and shy. You've got the main girl who is very capable. She's like an Onei-chan kind of character, but then she's also super in love with the main guy, which he did himself. The douche. He changed her soul right before she came real. That's messed up. And then you have Sebastian who's just... A proper little servant for his lord. I'm not really sure what kind of character Momonga's supposed to be yet. Like, he seems very smart in the way he's handling things. He didn't freak out like most people would. I would have freaked out, for one thing. And then for another thing, when the chick was going all over him. I wouldn't have resisted that when she was like, Are you going to do me right here and now? I'd have been like, Yeah, everybody else leave the room. It's time. But nah, <laughs> he does have a lot more self-control. He's quite intelligent, clearly. But uh, beyond that, I don't know what he's going to do. Like, that's the whole thing. This episode ended before we figured out anything. And I guess that's the cool thing about this series. He's going to probably be exploring what happened, why he's trapped here, and what's going on outside. We heard that Sebastian found something weird outside the crypt. But he didn't have time to tell anyone what it was. We're going to find that out next episode. So I'm not sure how this one is going to go. I'm liking it so far. I'm really, really liking it. It's very mature. It's a ridiculously mature version of Sword Art Online. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> so yeah. 
it's got a good recommendation from me, even though, like I said, barely anything happened in this episode. So I am more just waiting for episode two to come to see what it's actually going to be like. But just the way they set it up was really bold of them. To just have that whole thing where basically nothing happened in this first episode. It's really cool. I'm impressed. So thanks for listening, guys. Leave a comment to let me know what you thought of this first episode. Like if you enjoyed the review. And subscribe if you haven't to see more. And I will see you guys next time.